Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, I hope you are all doing well. In this video, I will show you how I made this spooky pumpkin 3D model in Autodesk Maya. So let's get started. So here we are in Maya. Let's create the base first. Take a sphere, scale it up a bit. And then, from channel box, turn down the subdivision height and axis to 12. Go to edge mode and select these edges by holding shift on your keyboard. Then apply bevel on them, with chamfer off, and very minimum fraction value. Now, go to vertex mode, and select the top center vertex and the bottom center vertex. Then press B key, for soft selection mode. And hold B key, and middle mouse drag for increasing the size of the soft selection. Now then, scale it down from the top, like this. After that, select all these middle edge loops by holding shift key on your keyboard. And then, scale it down from the middle. Press 3 to see the smooth surface. After that, select this middle vertex, then press Ctrl and F11 on your keyboard to select these faces. Then scale it from Y axis and make it flat. Similarly, do the same for the bottom part also. Now then, press Ctrl D to duplicate this object, and let's keep one of them in a layer. Turn off the visibility of the layer. Then select this mesh, hold Shift, right click, and then apply Smooth. I will give the divisions of 4, to make it high resolution mesh. Duplicate this object and keep it on a layer as high base mesh, and then turn off the visibility of the layer. After that, let's create the facial cutout on this model. For this, I will use curves to make the facial expressions. I downloaded some black and white JPEG images of spooky looking facial expressions. To make these complicated shapes with the curve, I will use Adobe Illustrator to make outline of these images and then import it to Maya. Let's create this one. Right click on it, and then select, open with Adobe Illustrator. So here we are in Adobe Illustrator. So as you can see, this image is very large size, so I will select this and scale it down by holding shift key. And position it properly. After that, select the image, then go to image trace option, and from here, select black and white logo. It will make the edges of the image more sharp, so that Illustrator can read it well, while tracing out the shape. Now then, select this image, and then click on Expand. It will automatically trace out the image and make vector curves out of the image. After that, go to File, and click on Save As. Choose your destination where you want to save the file. Rename it as per your choice. And then click on Save. And now from here, we need to change the version to Illustrator 8 and then click on OK. Now let's jump back to Maya. So now, go to File, and click on Import. Change the file types to Adobe Illustrator. Select the Illustrator file, and then click on Import. And here you can see the curve outline of the image created here for the facial expression. Drag and select all the curves, and click on Center Pivot. I will select the square curve, and delete it. And then position them around the grid. If you click once, on any of these curves, you will find there are two curves in each part. Now then, go to surfaces, and select bevel plus option box. I will reset the settings. And give bevel width 0.01. .01. After that, select one curve, and click on apply. It will create a mesh out of the curve. Now then, select the curves one by one and apply bevel plus. 
Make sure you are selecting the correct curve. In this method, you can create a 3D logos very easily from any outline images like this. Now then, select each of these meshes by holding Shift key, then move them out. Then hold Shift, right click, and combine them. Go to face mode, and select all the front faces, then hold Shift, right click, and extract faces. Then go to object mode, and select these meshes, and delete them. Now then, select these meshes and combine them. After that, unhide the visibility of the pumpkin base mesh. Select all the curves and add them in a layer. Now then, select this object and bring it front, and scale it down to match with the base. Then select this object, and extrude out, and bring them inside the pumpkin mesh. Go to face mode, and select all these black faces. Then hold shift, right click, and select face normals, then reverse normals. Now then, select the pumpkin first, then shift select the face. Hold shift, right click, and then select booleans, then difference. And it will cut out the face in the pumpkin. Go to face mode, select this face and bring it out. Delete the history to make the file lighter to use. Change this tab to animation. Then go to deform, nonlinear, and then select bend. From bend 1, select the curvature and see how the bend is working. Rotate the bend handle 90 degrees in Z and Y axis. Now adjust the curvature, so the arc bends inside the pumpkin. And adjust the shape to give some thickness to the pumpkin. Now then, do the same thing for the rest of the parts. After that, go to Delete by Type, and then History. Then delete all the interfaces to make the pumpkin hollow from inside. Now create a cylinder and bring it up. Change the value of the subdivision's axis to 12. Now scale that down to make the top part. Select the top faces, then extrude and scale them to make a random shape like this. After that, select these edge loops, and apply bevel on them. Now, create edge from the middle of these faces. Then select all the middle edge loops and then scale it down randomly. Now, let's create a plane, and place it under the pumpkin. Delete all the subdivisions. Then extrude the edge and pull it up. Then apply bevel on the corner edge and play with the settings to make it smooth. Create a camera and place it as per your choice. Then create an area light and place it on top of the pumpkin. Play with the intensity and exposure of the lights to make it visible in the render. Now then, select the pumpkin, then right-click, and select Assign New Material. From here, select Arnold Shader, and then select AI Standard Surfaces. Then from here, increase the weight all the way to 1. Now click on the color, and assign orange color to it. Increase the roughness to 0.5, so that it doesn't look too shiny. 
Now then, go to Windows, then select Hypershade. Let's rename this material as Orange. Select this material, right-click, and choose Graph Network. Press Tab key on your keyboard and search for AI Bump. I will expand this Hypershade, so that we can have a clear look at what's going on here. Now, connect the out value to normal camera. Now then, press tab key on your keyboard and search for AI noise. Then connect the out color R to bump map. Now, we can increase scale value for all these three channels from here. The noises are looking quite high. So I have to play with the scale of the noise. So instead of changing the values for all the three channels separately, we can add AI user data float to control all of them at once. So then, add AI user data float here. And then, expand the scale, and now, connect the out value with all the three axes. Now, select this node, and we can play with the scale value from here. Now select the orange main material node, and you can play with these settings and see what looks best for you. You can isolate the texture map by clicking on this button to see what is actually happening. You can also control the bump height from here. Now then, create another bump node here. Now select the main orange material, and now I will connect this bump map with the normal. Middle mouse drag and drop the bump node in the normal. And then connection editor will pop up. Then from here, select out value. And from here select coat normal. Then the bump node will connect with the main orange material. After that, create another AI noise. And connect the out color R with the bump map. Now create AI user data float. And then, connect the out value with all the three scale axes. Then play with the settings and see what looks best for you. If I isolate the texture map, we can see that it is very dull. To increase the contrast we have to create AI range node in between the AI noise and AI bump node. So then, break the connection between these two nodes, and create AI range node. Now then, connect the out color with the input. And connect out color R with bump map. And now, you can play with these settings and see what looks best for you. Now for this top part I will apply the same material to it only the color will be green. Select the material from the hypershade, and press Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste the same material here. Select the pasted material, right click and select graph network. Change the name to green, and change the orange color to green. Now then, select the object, then select the material, right click and select assign material to selection. Now create a sphere, and place it inside the pumpkin. Then go to Arnold, then Lights, and select Mesh Light. Now go to Attribute Editor and play with the settings, change the color of the lights, increase the intensity and exposure and see what looks best for you. So in this way you can create a couple more pumpkins, tweak the shapes as per your choice and set up your own scene. So I have set up a scene like this. I have created three area lights. On top there is a warm light with these settings. This one is also a warm light with less intensity and exposure. And this one is cool light with medium intensity. 
Apart from all those lights, I have created a dome light and applied HDRI image on that and kept a very low intensity so that it replicates night scene. And for this plane, I have assigned AI shadow matte material. Then from attribute editor, select P plane shape 1. Under Arnold, turn off the opaque option so that it will act as a holdout shader. So guys, I hope you like this tutorial. Subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications first whenever there is any new video in my channel. Feel free to ask me anything regarding this video in the comments section. Stay safe, and I will see you on the next video.